can only record for less than an hour. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Nerdbubble Podcast, episode 250. 250. The big year. Woo! 250. Quarter of a century. Quarter of a century. I know, 250 episodes. How do you feel? Like a moved man. I Brilliant. Feel like I've changed. Okay. <laughs> I've moved. I physically moved. Okay. Um, and I feel like I've grown 250 episodes because cut the gist and cut the intro a little bit. We're all talking about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And I remember back 247 or 48 episodes ago, it was either episode 2 or 3, where the, one of the first questions is, Who's James Gunn? And I went, uh. And <laughs> that's when I left that first podcast episode feeling like a complete dimwit thinking this ain't the right career move. I do not know my movies. I only go to cinema. I don't know what I'm on about. And then, you know, 248 episodes later, here I am babbling about movies that we've all seen, big blockbusters like the Marvels, like the Disneys, like the Netflixes, or lesser known independent foreign stuff that no one gets to watch. But Guardians 3 is, well, practically our baby from the get-go. It was the film that... You're welcome. Yeah, you, you are very welcome. I thank me, I thank George every day of looking in the mirror going forward now. There we go. Because God bless Guardians and God bless James Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 260 will be our five year anniversary. Ooh! Whoop, whoop. So, until then, we've got limited space on the thing because I don't know where. Because every time we record these, like time goes off of it, like it's saving it, but I don't save the files, so I need. I need to sort out of the computer, but until then. Mm. It is our purely Guardians themed episode. Guardians yes. of Thine Galaxy. Of Thine Galaxy. We will briefly go through one and two because yeah. we don't have as long as we thought we would. And <laughs> yeah. And then we'll go through three. It's been in... years. You know the story by now. We'll go hmm. through three yeah. in mostly spoiler free because it okay. has only been out. It's a week. A week today. To be, tomorrow, tomorrow. Sorry, yeah, it's tom- normally a Wednesday. Yeah. It comes out, yeah, yeah. Fucking, I don't know what day it is anymore. Mm. But um, and, we, and what is next for this group of characters? Um, if they make out, if they make out, if they make it, if they make out, maybe. Mm. Get, look, look, if I, they make I, it I, out, I had a Lego X-wing. <laughs> I've wanted one of them for you fucking years. It. So when I went to Legoland, I bought it, and guess what? It was cheaper at Smiths. Oh really? At uh, what was the price comparison? Like what was without giving the rough 5, figure? Forty-five. Oh, no. Mm. It came with Leia and some old white guy. <laughs> some, some old white guy? Yeah. I don't know mm. who he is. Moon Gen- Ben Kenobi. So, General Kenobi. He was the greatest star pilot of the galaxy. But anyway, speaking of the greatest yes. star pilot in the galaxy. Lord of the stars. Let yes. us cast our minds back. Back in time. Back to before... This. This started. <laughs> before, before episode one. Yeah, before episode one, yeah. Before... Even we'd met. Right, sure, yeah, before we'd met. Yeah. 2014. And 13. Oh, God, 13. 13. 13. When we heard um, about a little film being announced by Marvel Studios called Guardians of the Galaxy. And we all collectively went, who? Eh? <laughs> yeah, who? What? When? What year is this? Yeah. <laughs> do me, do me. Do me, do me. <laughs> um, obviously, I didn't really know much about the Guardians. I had no idea. I sort of had like seen stuff and like mm. I sort of knew like you know there was a raccoon and a tree in and it. a talking tree yeah yeah you can't and um, a tree. Mm. James Gunn who I didn't really know of at the time and how prominent a role he would play in our lives <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah our movie lives yeah um, yeah not personally and I was like cool uh, looking forward to it and then it came out and I loved it one of the biggest surprises that I still when I think of the cinema I still think of that film and that experience. And it was it was at such a point where I was going to cinema regularly before this podcast and everything, but it was just the feeling of going into something, going like eh, I could have been doing this and this. Like I went into it going like, oh, it, it kills time. I could have been doing this today. But we all left the films, and they and like long story short, they all became household names. Mm. Everyone on that lineup, James Gunn himself, the name, the the, the brand. It's only before yeah. before the film, it was only like the comic nerds that would have read them. That would have known who they are. No one on the planet knew who they are. But even if you're a comic book fan or not, I feel like, like Deadpool, this reaches people outside of the MCU bracket. It's more of a general thing. General. Now. And I would say one of the best modern comedies, like about the first one in, like, in particular, mm-hmm. like going for me. It was just. Yeah. I Because like, Starstruck. I, 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 also, I also think that Guardians 1 isn't full James Gunn. Like, I don't think he's, f- like, full-on... T- I think three is. 
free death and i think yeah. most of two is because mm. it came in that period where marvel still had the formula it's you know one of the reasons why unfortunately we didn't get an edgar wright ant-man no i know Shame. and then after that they were kind of like oh like the director comes on board they do like their flavor of it because that's the whole reason we're hiring them yeah like, our flavor. and then you yeah. know we'll get and then you make the story fit around that they, they just have to tell certain parameters and like i think guardians 3 is the most James Gunn, especially in the MCU. Yes. Um, yes. It felt like he gave everything in that one, and that was good. But like, I think this is very sort of toned down James Gunn, which is, I think, the only thing retroactively that I think look it's at Guardians the and I think thing about the first. Yeah, the weakest thing about it, in a way. Yeah, you, like retroactively, yeah. you think it's a bit safe. Fine. Yeah. 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 Um, I, agree. I agree. Yeah. Going off of Karen Gillan's recent interviews, as they've been doing the rounds, what a cast. Like mm. Sarah Haley Finn always knocks it out of the park on every Marvel movie and you know, works on the Star Wars stuff. But every every MCU movie she casts, she casts perfectly. Perfectly, yeah. Like every project has been to a T amazing. Like, you know, from your Tatiana Maslani and um Oh, what's her name? Um, Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan. Uh, uh, oh, Kamala Khan. Iman Vellani. Uh, Iman Vellani, That's yeah. the one. Iman Vellani. Like all the way up to your Robert Downey Jr.'s. Like every single character has been to perfection, I would argue. There's only mm. one film she didn't um, cast. Incredible Hulk. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, it definitely didn't. But to fu- like, because Karen Gillan was talking about like to find us all and to have like, mm. it's just it, like it's so lucky that Spe- that's who we ended up with. And a good range of actors as well. Fantastic, like, all of different ranges and acting abilities and experience. Mm, and experience, yeah, big one. Because Karen Gillan was. A just turn she was just under 30 i think when she'd got the part because when guardians come out she was 30 right because she was no she was younger than that she was younger because she's younger than matt smith i keep forgetting um yeah how old was she when she was in so she was 22 or 21 when she was cast in 2009 i think okay oh bloody hell yeah that is bad maths yeah so she was quite young when she like first got the part of guardians like she's grown up with like this is a decade of her life yeah she's grown with it um chris pratt was taken from Chubby, schlocky, um, uh, sitcom, sitcom star parks and recreation, recreation. To yeah. hot Chris and one of the Chris's. He was made. This film made him one of the it Hollywood made, Chris's. It made him Hollywood Chris. Yeah. It led yeah. to Jurassic World, uh, Jurassic, the Lego movie, Jurassic Chris, yes. the Lego Chris, <laughs> the Lego Chris, the Mario, Chris. the Mario Chris. <laughs> Going to see Mario again tomorrow. Oh, good. Yeah, because hmm. we're taking um, my niece because she really likes. It. But she says it like America because of all the adverts in the game. She goes, "It's Mario, Mario." Like, oh, yeah, God, it's, no. yeah, it's Mario. But you know, you watch a lot of American <laughs> yeah. stuff on it's YouTube. It's the way the world works. Yes. Yeah, at this rate, yeah, commercialism. Mm. Um, yeah, the Mario Chris, the um, Gar- a, upcoming Garfield Chris, the upcoming year. Garfield Chris <laughs> next year. <laughs> God's sake! Um, what else has he done? Um, uh, movie Forty Three Chris, Passengers Chris. Movie for- was he in Movie Forty Three? Not yeah, he's yet, the but... one where he like, he like, I want you to shit on me, like that whole one. Oh, <laughs> like, and then he eats a burrito, and then he run like he's running across the road to like get his wife back, gets hit by the car, and then shits all up the windscreen because he's been eating spicy food to try and take a massive shit on her. X movie forty three. That's sold. Terrible film. That's sold. Um, that sold me. Mm. <laughs> um, and you know, arguably the greatest wrestler turned actor of our generation, Dave Batista. Dave Batista. Dave the Animal Batista, who walked alone inside a pit full of danger yeah. for many, many Superstar years. Superstar is yeah. Dwayne Johnson. Um, performer is John, John Cena. Cena. But the greatest actor with the greatest range. The and funniest. By far the funniest. Just, I think, like, because obviously, like, wrestlers are made, like, they're mainly made into, like, action, like, or yeah, action, action comedy stars. stereotypical stars, stars. Yeah, yeah. But he's gone out of his way to be like, no, I've only got a few years of doing, like, this action stuff left, so if you want me, like, like ask oh, me now. Yeah. Because, like, in about five or six years' time, because he's in, like, his mid-50s, isn't he? he he's like, going on, he's, he's definitely going in on his bit. 50s. Like, because, like, Hugh Jackman, like, when he stopped doing, because you have to keep training, you have to keep it up if you're uh, making... 54. Him. 54. Yeah, like you have to keep it up if you're making a movie every two or three years as a superhero, so or as an action star, you have to keep on top of that physically. Yeah, of course. Yeah, like yes, you get paid a lot of money to do that, but still, your body does not recover does as well as it recover. used to. No, it definitely won't recover. Uh, Zoe Saldana, who was arguably the biggest movie star when it was cast, her and Bradley Cooper, because yeah, I think Cooper. Bradley Cooper was still on the up because I think he'd just done like Silver Linings Playbook and things like that, and he was still sort of 
he buzzing had. off the hangover yeah. and the hangover too well, he's, like got, he's, gone from, yeah, he's gone from hangover yeah. to sort of like his star was rising but I think it rose more post Guardians, Guardians. not because of Guardians but then he went no. on to do like Star is Born Star. and like more things like that and mm. he's a fantastic and arguably yeah because I think American Sniper was just after this I or, think it might have and yes. that's arguably his best film performance um, oh so we get to see it uh, Vin Diesel um, Family uh, yeah Family yes. Actions that this was before uh, Seven. It was after six of, was twenty thirteen. Six was so twenty thirteen. So this was pre seven. Yeah, this was before seven. Yeah. Yes. Obviously, leaning into his Iron Giant roots. But yeah, Zoe Saldana mm. arguably the biggest movie star because it's off the not long off the back of Avatar. Yes. When you think about it, production wise, which is depressing when you think that the second one's only just come out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and her whole thing when she was cast was like, I've been blue and now I get to be green. It's like because uh, uh, she obviously and she was in Star Trek. Star as well, Trek as well. Yeah, literally, I've got her up. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. she'd done two Star Trek films and Avatar, and then this. Mm. In terms of her major Hollywood blockbusters, obviously, like we're not segregated her to just these films. Just these IPs, yeah. yeah. And Karen Gillan off the back of Doctor, the Who, Doctor Who, yeah. Um, a brief encounter of the f- like the newly cast Josh Brolin as Thanos. Mm. Um, mm. Lee Pace as Ronan, Ronan the Accuser, Accuser. Yeah. Um, who was my favourite Guardians villain. Mm. Yeah, key word was was. Mm. Um, and who else is in that? You got you got the Stanley cameo. You've got um, Michael Rooker and the, Michael and the Ravengers. Yondu, yeah. Um, Peter Sarah. Peter Vince, Sarah. Vince. What a bunch of a holes. Yeah. Peter Sarah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Unappreciated one. actor. Darth Maul was once in the future. Darth Maul, who actually yeah. did record his lines for uh, Solo, for, mm. but then it was. Just given to Ray Park. Anyway, we haven't got enough time for this. Because, um, <laughs> so Guardians is the start of the ragtag found family stuff. Mm-hmm. Which, like I've said, for me felt very... It feels, looking back on it now, feels very safe. Still a hell of enjoyable because it was the first non... The first thing we hadn't heard of or wasn't in common yeah. public knowledge from Marvel's definitely studios. At the MCU at that point, it was definitely, like you say, the most unknown, like he's talked about project, most... You know, least anticipated going into it because nobody had bloody heard what the film was. But as soon as that happened, Hollywood superstars overnight. Yes. Like, and the and the brand went skyrocketing. Yes, all because of that film. What was your opinions <clears> after <throat> it? Because I know, like before, you like say you were kind of unawares, like most of us were. Of, did did you of, then of, like want to sort of not only see more of the Guardians? Were you kind of like intrigued? Of course, after, more about them? after the first film, absolutely. I still perform like. Marvel Unlimited, you know, spot, quick sponsor to the Marvel comic app. Instead of having the room to buy every comic and put them on the shelves, Marvel Unlimited, you read them from your phone. Uh, it's something like six ninety nine a month over here in the UK. It might be eight ninety nine dollars or something like that. Um, essentially, that's how I've read. But it was before I got the app, and I don't think the app was even out then. But uh, definitely made me want to read some comics, and I have delved deep, and and. Not just with the films, but games have come out since. Again, yep. just just the brand. The brand just skyrocketed, and they became sensations. And it was all because of this one movie. It was just, I wanted to know more because of this film. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. Benicio Del Toro, as well, was the collector. The collector. It's, look, you were saying that it's the trilogy that connects the... Le- or the like, series of films connects that connects the, the least to the, to the overall outer. saga. Aside from James Gunn literally at the time of recording saying that he sort of made the Infinity Stone BS in his word like in 90 minutes. Aside from that gem being part of the six stones that Thanos later collects it is kind of a standalone film. They don't really yeah. connect. They don't mesh. They don't talk about oh yeah remember that guy in the iron suit they, oh patriotism America yeah they, they don't reference other heroes because they aren't aware of each other yet. Mm-hmm. It is just... Rebels in space, kind yeah. of Star Wars like. Yeah, very yeah. Um, akin to the Ant Man stuff of like, not like small scale, but it's very sort of like this is its own thing. Yeah. Independent, yeah. And I really enjoyed that. I really like. I I think that this is one of my favorite trilogies, if not my favorite MCU trilogy. Yeah. Um. Most con- yeah, arguably most consistent. Mm-hmm. The mm. directing's great. The, obviously, the big thing about these films <clears throat> are the soundtracks. Yes, and that's the thing that caught oh us boy. with this first one that we weren't used to. And then, since we've been like, what's going to be? What's going to be the soundtrack for Volume Two? What, what's he going to use in Volume, volume Three? three. Mm. I, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I think James Gunn is such an interesting filmmaker. I know a lot of people have sort of gone off of him a bit more recently when, in the wake of like. 
the he's doing Squad. the DC stuff mm. because I know Mike sort of like when he was kind of like everywhere it was kind of like it's like it's kind of annoying now that it's like you know James and Gunn like, James and Gunn's like just seen the Flash and that's great and make sure you watch this and make sure but that, obviously that's his job that is his job and unfortunately I think filmmaker yeah. obviously filmmaker first CEO second yeah but unfortunately like that you know that's how he is now you know not to like I know we take the piss, but like to finally get this film because for us five years ago talking about this, this is mm. insane because this the first film won our um, MCU, uh, MCU World, Cup. World Cup way back when. Yeah, yeah well, I think we're due for another one of those soon. That was yeah, yeah. Because I really do. I I rank the first one in the top tier of um, the MCU films. Um, I think it may have may have just been pushed down slightly by stuff that's come since. Mm. In terms of, but I think it's still definitely top ten minimum of the yeah, MCU films. Yeah, yeah, I think it still will be in the ten. Yeah, if not mm. um, pushing for five, but I think that the third one might have um, yeah. hopped up Uppercut, quite away. Uppercut, I know, it man. might have hopped over a load of them, especially mm. for me. Um, mm. Yeah, I like the fun. It felt very much like what if Marvel but Star <clears> Wars. <throat> yeah, because. We were then starting to lean into the, you know, it's a, you know, it's a superhero film within another thing. Like, you know, Winter Soldier was a spy thriller. This was thriller like a space, thing, yeah. opera, space opera, like comedy heist for Ant Man. Mm. Um, and then Inception, sort of hot, mind-bending uh, thriller for of Doctor Inception, Strange. mind-bending, sort yeah. of almost horror tint that they didn't let Scott Derrickson Caps, do enough. Capitalise on Doctor Strange. Yeah, Doctor Strange, and mm. then. You return to this later on. With, so, yeah, so Guardians 1, anyway, sorry. Um, great. We're really glad that it led to a sequel at the time. Yeah. Um, I still think it, it, hold, it still holds up. It still yeah, holds up. I rewatched up. it um, recently. Fucking, it's pissing down, isn't it? As an, as, an adult, as an adult, I'm glad I didn't hang me washing outside today. <laughs> hey. hey um, but, mm. um, yeah, I really do love Guardians 1. Yeah. I know, like, it's hard to sort of sit between, like, Oh, people always say Guardians 2 is... You know the whole drawings that it's like, you know, when they're like season 1, 2 and 3 of a show, whatever. They did one for the Guardians trilogy and it was the horse on fire for number 1. Yeah. Um, Back to the drawing, but still a high quality drawing for number 2. And then on fire again, like, for Guardians God tier for Guardians yeah. 3. Yeah. And people are like, the horse should just all be on fire. Like, people hate on Guardians 2. Like, yeah, and, it's and I unnecessary. Really know, I don't yeah. really know where I stand. I think maybe... I think the only thing I'd say about two, I feel like when you think logically, apply that to a comic book movie. But when you actually think about the movie, and I get Peter Quill finding a dad, very personal story, very sentimental. You know, most arguably one of the more relatable stories ever. It's just I just think every time I think about that movie, I just feel like Peter Quill and and Kurt Russell. I know they go through a relationship, but they play catch up in however many minutes it is. Mm. But because you've got so many scenes intercut, it's them for like forty minutes. Just playing catch and yeah. handball and oh look you're a god Peter. Well, because James long. talks about how um, film one's about the mother, about, film two's yeah. about the father, film three is almost like about the self, like coming yeah. to the one who self. You are. Yeah, that's, that's a good. Yeah, um, didn't even realise that. And yeah. I think I'm really interested when this comes out, either on Disney Plus or the third one. Sorry, when the third one yeah. comes out on Disney Plus or physical media, to then watch all three back to back. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I know you get the stuff that happens with Infinity War and Endgame, but you can really sort of detach from that because yeah, it doesn't have a major effect no. in the third one. No. It only massively affects one character for obvious reasons, but again, we'll briefly touch it when we get to three because it's part of the Avengers, but yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so, the second one was announced. It was announced. Way back when. Excited? 20... Of course. Yes, Music Sensation Volume 2, Awesome Mix Volume 2, um, great acting again, same director, thank God, not some other person trying to do their twist on it. Well, yeah, because we've had, so John Watts, James Gunn, James Gunn John and Watts, Peyton Reed. Peyton Reed, yeah. Yeah. Are the only, yeah, they're the ones to do their trilogies. Yeah. From start to finish. And and Favreau. And Favreau. Like he's Iron did three. Oh, fuck, ah, oh, yes. That's why, yeah. And the Russos did two and three two and of three Captain, America. Captain America. Yeah. Whereas Joe Johnson did, did number one. one. Um, and then the guy that did the whole trilogy. Oh wait. Uh, <laughs> the guy that should have done the whole trilogy. Because mm. this is weird. This is um. It's weird because I feel like we've kind of 
grown up. I know we like we've grown up with the MCU because like this is very much this generation Star Wars. This is a big thing that's like as it goes on now and continues to go on, and when it eventually finishes, it'll be like, wow, wasn't that fun? And but um, I think Guardians especially because even with the stuff that happened with us and we joke about it, but like for him to be fired for comments that he made years and years yeah, ago, way too he, long then though. he apologised for it at the time, apologised for it again when he was when it was brought back up. And to get to where we are, and like the whole trilogy is about growth. It's about you know evolving, changing, bettering yourself. And we didn't really catch on with that, and I think it becomes more apparent in two mm. because there's more of that in there. Like, I think, <clears throat> sorry, retroactively, I think I like two more than one now, just because I yeah. think that the quality goes up. I feel like everything they did right about the first is there times five. Yeah. And whatever it, they it get does wrong. start off the trend of sorry to cut you off. No, the, no, 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 the, no of the course. Jokes, jokes over what you're doing. I think that's when the the formula, the MCU humor, then kicks in. Then kicks yeah. in there, but then that's the yeah. other film's fault for sort of saturating that. I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You tell us a bit about number two. I'm just going to get. <clears throat> yeah. No. So Guardians two, bigger, badder, better. The generic tagline for all sequels. Um, no. So again. Super ecstatic for this film when it finally came out. The MCU, you know, there there wasn't a misfire at the MCU. Guardians again, household names, woohoo! Um, bigger cast this time. Kurt Russell as the movie's villain, but not just any villain. He's a bloody planet. I mean, how can you top a bloody planet being a villain? Um, I literally, I literally just said Kurt Russell. How can you top a planet? You can't. How can you top a planet? He'd sm- he would smush her. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, Dra- what do you, I did drags and it's fantastic <laughs> it's musher I like it because I think Kurt mm. Russell would have been Star-Lord if this was made in, oh, in the in 70s the 80s, 80s yeah. like he oh my definitely god definitely yes. would have been yes but um, mm. yeah I, I like what they do in number two because it subverts it because we get that little tag at the end of one it's like you no know, good thing we didn't take him to his father like we were told him. Yeah, he was a jackass he was a jackass yeah but then we get more context into that. It's when because we didn't really talk, touch on Yondu much in the first one because I think his most yeah. poignant role is obviously He's in definitely two. number two. Yep. Um, it's ah. like like that whole thing of like you know he, he may have been your father but he wasn't your daddy, daddy. Mm. and like Michael Rooker and I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Huh, is he cool? Hell, Hell yeah, yeah, he's cool. cool. <laughs> I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Um, <laughs> mm. God, I miss Michael Rooker. He was awesome. But um, Mel Dixon. It, like it is such a fam like a family thing and it does do the tropes of a found family stuff some of the time but the way like especially when we're going to get to number three in a bit like the journeys of these characters is just phenomenal oh yeah like, but none of it felt like a misfire so none of it none of it aside from one character which we'll get to but like yeah all of it just went so cohesively well. and well i know and it's weird to sort of have that where there's I don't really have any In a trilogy, you always have the one film which you say, definitely the weakest, the other two are good. Or... I think you could make a, a case mm. uh, for one or two to be the weakest just on preference at the minute. Yeah, right, yeah, at the minute, yeah. Given time, you may feel differently about three. Like, you might retroactively think, well, because of circumstances of, like... The, Avengers the world films, and, it might, yeah. like, effect, like you know, oh, comes this, this, and this, because people are going to do fucking video essays on it in years to come. Adam Warlock, mm. but um, I love, I love Rocket in this because yeah. I, I, I like a lot of them feel like a gimmick in the first one, apart yeah. from Gamora and um, Quill, Star Lord, yeah, because it's like these are these are what we're following. We're following him. It's a will they, won't they thing with him and Gamora. Yeah. Um, I will not fail for your pelvic sorcery, <laughs> <laughs> and the whole obviously because the music is through him and like his yeah. his tape yeah. decks and stuff. So like that's how you know we get the soundtrack of the film is because we're listening through him. Quill's perspective, yes. Yeah. And a point that the third film makes is that he never goes back to Earth until well later until on. Until maybe later on. Until maybe, maybe later on. I don't know. But the fact that the music. All right, whether he met other humans in space and they had a good chat about Earth history and Earth music, because he made like art references. He didn't quote the Mona Lisa or Leonardo da Vinci, but he said some artists, and I was like, well, even my nan turned around, who's a bit of a like not 
cynical critic, but she'd be like, how would he know about that if he hasn't been on Earth? And it's like, well, it's a good, valid point. Music, you can make the exception for, because we're learning it as yeah, but is. Yeah, but also, like, he probably keeps tabs on it. Like, it's not yeah, like suppose. he doesn't... But he probably he, does but, miss but it. But like he says in free, and like everyone's tagline is, I was afraid of running from the past, but now I ain't afraid no more, whatever it is. You know, I ain't running away from myself, from myself anymore. And that's, yeah, that's kind of prominent. True to all of them, really, yeah, well, when you think about yeah, it. Yeah. Um, we still get Nebula <coughs> being... She sort of feels like she's for this one. It's almost like yeah. she's lost her purpose, but like mm. that's the only purpose she knows is to try and kill Gamora. Her sister. Yeah, and she's still like that up until the end. Like I think we've said, like Nebula would be in our top five, top three Guardians. Yeah, probably. Yeah, out of all of them, because I think her arc is the most significant out of all of them, apart from like you know <coughs> what Star Lord and Gamora have gone through. But obviously. That kind of finished with Infinity War. Infinity War, yeah, definitely, definitely Infinity War. Um, <laughs> For obvious reasons. Yeah. I mean, the reason we're not really going into in depth on this is that we've kind of done this like before. Yeah, cool. like, the the did, whole we world phase, is done we did our Phase War. One and Phase Two stuff. I think we've yeah. done our Phase Three one. I don't really remember. Um, I can't think We drew a Phase Four one soon, so yeah, oh. fuck that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, so like you know. And you know, you want to hear us talk about three, so that's that's the yeah, main three, three, three. Um, Hold on, keep holding on. Um, mm. Groot, uh, Groot is there for merchandise reasons. Yeah, merchandise, he's the money. He's maker. Grogu before Grogu, right? Which is another weird thing to think about. How that's old mad, the yeah. gap between Guardians two and like three? Really, two years. Yeah, like two. Was, years. Yeah. So Grogu, like Grogu, is not like he. So what is six years since the last Guardians film? Right, yeah. So it's been four years since Mandalorian. Because the end of, of twenty nineteen. <laughs> yeah, end of twenty nineteen was when because Disney Plus launched in America first. Because we was we was in the cinema watching Rise of Skywalker. Yes. And the finale for season one went out because yeah, you that was, day that day you was like oh this, this has just happened I am not missing. <laughs> yeah, you were like oh this uh, it looks like this has just happened and we were, <laughs> we were both like oh why can't we have Disney Plus now? God damn it! Mm. Then see yeah. it now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! Uh, <laughs> See it now. I'm the big boss, the head honcho, the Lord of the Rings. Um, I forget what the question was. Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, because the Guardians always feel like because I know like rosters and that change like especially like because I'm very much when I was younger I didn't really like sort of when stuff would change too much like from film to film. Yeah. Like so like early days of the MCU I was like why are the outfits always changing, changing every should, time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But then when you're like you get past the fact of like oh storytelling and evolving and things yeah. like that and naturally now it's just a thing of oh that's what they look like it's just what they, that's yeah. cool it's how it um, is yeah and like with the roster of like Avengers it was like oh because then like they're gonna grow and like change and stuff and it was like especially not so much in Age of Ultron but I was kind of like oh this is like the first time I've had to sort of deal with it in sequence because like obviously I've I've read different comics of different lineups and different and stuff, lineups it's in and different of, designs it's yeah. an actual because it's an ongoing <clears throat> thing an ongoing story yeah. it's transition it's change yes and then like with Guardians you've had Nebula and Yondu and Kraglin become the Guardians got Guardians yeah and it's always gone beyond that first five mm-hmm. like Mantis comes aboard like I think Mantis, yeah. Mantis it's a shame that we've not had more Mantis no, because retroactively, if, if I wasn't thinking and reviewing, I'd feel like Mantis has always been there in the first even. Yeah. I feel like she could have fit in. I feel like she could have been a good replacement for like the collector's like side woman he had. Briefly. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Mm. Um, but obviously, like she's liberated from the clutches of ego in like the third act, and then becomes a member of the Guardians. Um, but not. But like again, we keep hinting at the third one, but not independent. She's just doing what the Guardians are told because that's what you know. Because that's what mm. she does. Um, mm. I, like the stuff with the sister, like the sister stuff, especially because this is we're gearing up for Infinity War, and oh. these two are going to be quite important if we're going to be talking about her father. Who is her father? I ask Thanos. Well, adopted. Who? Father. Yeah, yeah. I like that we didn't Talk see him in two. Yeah, because I didn't want it to become a thing of like he just like, me. sits in a chair in every Guardians film. Yeah. Um, and every appearance he changed because he was more red in Avengers. Yeah, because than... when I first saw <coughs> Avengers, yeah, I was like, "Is that Red Skull?" But yeah, so did I. I was like, "Red Skull?" He's, he wasn't he just in the last film? Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "Red Skull." And it's like, "Oh, that's no, Thanos," and then he was mm. purple, more CGI, and then the texture is phenomenal. Infinity War, yeah, Infinity um, War. yeah. 
Yeah, I, I really do love to. I think some of the jokes maybe go a bit too hard, and obviously, like you say, started off the Marvel. This was kind of the MCU humour. Yeah, mm. the outside of the Guardians MCU film formula of more jokes and stuff, but, um, yeah. you know. More laughs. The Guardians yeah. have always been good at its humour, but there's drama, especially with this final instalment. Final yeah. instalment of the trilogy, because there will be another oh, this Gu- trilogy. There will be another yeah. Guardians film. James Gunn or not, it will be a new Guardians. Mm. Well, Chris Pratt has said he would carry on. Like he's now said, like if uh, like James wasn't involved and I still had the opportunity to play him, like I'd still I love would. to carry on playing. Star I Lord. am the Lord of the Stars, Lord of the Stars and the mm. Mind. Mm. Um, mm. obviously, like the story-wise in terms of sequels, it is a bit sort of like more basic of a plot than the first one. Yeah, but mm. I like you say when you get past all the things and then it's just Kurt Russell and Chris Pratt for a vast majority of it. Yeah, and it's Peter getting a glimpse of what he's life missed could since have been. his mum yeah, died. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, what his life could have been. Like that's yeah. what he's missed is mm. that parental figure because, like, he lost his mum, was abducted, and without realizing it until the end, like, <coughs> had a father figure in Yondu. In Yondu, yeah, um, and had a family. Like that's I know that's one of the tropes, but like you know, oh, I had a family this whole time, but that's really sweet and poignant. And I the like Yondu spoilers funeral. Yeah. Still, like, it gets me, like, when, yeah. the, because at that point when they'd had, like, arguments and stuff, but, like, he's, and then when Star Lord, like, is talking to Rocket, and it's like, well, like, obviously, like, we all still love you and that thing, like, and they're all, like, mm-hmm. it's just them watching, like, the mm-hmm. space fireworks and Craglin's reaction to the rest of the Ravenger Corps, because those Ravengers aren't the full Ravengers. No. They're, like, an offshoot from the rest of them because there's, but essentially, uh, ones for different sectors because they're, they're, they're basically a... the original guardians. Like in the universe, like Easter eggs, they are the original members of the guardians. Yeah, like the Be- original team. Yeah, because there's mm. like you know a big thing of like all the Raven, like the Ravenger Cold and your different the Ravager, colors. And yeah, stuff. and they were kind of an offshoot because they became more sort of like almost like, basically like space space pirates. Sure, with the stuff. just not from Patrick Trout and stuff. Um, too. Yeah, and retroactively yeah. have been, like you know. Come back um, together. As part since. of family. Yeah. Um, yeah, we get great cameos from the original Guardians team of Sylvester Stallone, Miley Cyrus before she was played by Tara oh. Strong. <laughs> um, yeah, wrecking ball herself. Yeah. The weird red um, Doctor Strange looking bastard with the portals. Yeah, I yeah. noticed that in the, the third one. Thumbs up thing, and it's yeah. like, um, and the crystal face, crystal face man. Yeah. Taser face. <laughs> Taser face. That's a whole great bit. Ta- yeah, Taser face is probably the best scene, the best joke of number two. I love Taser. I don't, um, <laughs> no, because I, I was rewatching it last night, and I was um, like the whole first thing with the Zargonauts thing, where like you oh, know, <laughs> he just appears next to um, Drax just appears next to Quill, and he just like fucking shits himself. Because <laughs> is that in um, is that in Infinity War? That is was... when he talks about like you know if he got like, kill me if like go away, and then she, he's like my movements are so uh, imperceptible. Hi, Drax. Drax. <laughs> <laughs> we li- we leave it in a good place. <clears throat> we get five post credit scenes. Oh, yeah, 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 there is, isn't it? The yeah, 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 yeah. during the credits. Other, yeah, which have a nice power. For, like one of them has a nice power for me, which was um, Craglin uh, using Yondu's, Yondu's fin. Your fin, I'll say whistle, but yeah, using the fin, and whistling yeah. with the arrow and things. It's like cool. Like, nice. Ah, ah, and that has a nice power from the third one. Yeah, um, yeah. All in all. One of the better sequel, obviously the best sequel in the MCU, <coughs> without a doubt, yeah. is Captain America: Winter Soldier. Of course. So you know, of course. as long as you're better than Iron Man two, <laughs> yeah, as long as you're better than Iron right. Man two, absolutely anything would be better than Iron Man two. Let's be honest. Um, but yeah, we knew they were coming back. We knew we'll touch briefly on Infinity War and Endgame. Everyone Endgame, knows they're not really yeah. in it, apart from the final no. fight. So no. they're part in Infinity. The only War. survivor is Rocket. Rocket and Nebula. Rocket, oh yeah, Nebula. Because a lot of people were like. Oh yeah, because they thought Tony was on his own, but uh, he gets left with Nebula. Um, mm-hmm. So um, <coughs> obviously they're part in Infinity War and the space stuff when they meet up with um, Tony, uh, Stephen, and Peter. Oh. Where is Gamora? Oh, do you want better? Who's Where Gamora? Gamora? Oh, do, do you, you want, want better? better? Why is Gamora? <laughs> it's probably the one you the shoot my gun, I'll roast him. Let's go. Uh, do it, Quill. I can take it. No, you can't. She's right. She's right. You can't. What master do you serve? serve. What, what master, master do I serve? Am I supposed well, to say, I say Jesus? Jesus? You're, the, you're from Earth. Earth. No, I'm yeah, not from Earth. I'm from Missouri. Earth. That's on Earth. Earth shit. What are you hassling us for? <laughs> you know Thor. Tall guy, no, not no, that good, good looking. looking. Needed saving. 
yeah, because like they're brought into it when like after Thor's ship like crashes, mm. like they meet up then later with like the offshoot of the Avengers trying to stop Thanos off world, which they nearly succeed. They do, and succeed, the most poignant nearly. point and point we need to talk about is the death of Gamora. Because Gamora is sacrificed <gasps> on Boromir, for the, for, the Boromir great, for the Soul Stone. The greater good. Which we... And that's <coughs> like... You know, she's obviously a main focus of Infinity War because she's captured by she, Thanos. We see her life as a child and how mm, she was liberated. Even after so to death, speak. you get the the, bre- the, the, the the sweet scene of Thanos in like the soul did well, you do whatever it? you want to call it. Yeah. yeah. Why did it cast? Everything. Everything. Mm. Um... Um, it's like fantastic for the law, and obviously, like they have their nice little moments on them, um, with like trying to get to the collector first, like to get the stole, yeah, the, the stone off him. I, you, you, Nev- Gamora, you go right. Yeah. And they just, I said yeah, right. Go. I like when um Drax runs off to do it, and like Mantis puts him to sleep, and he just like he smashes onto the sleeve. floor. <laughs> <laughs> or like wake him up, wake. <sighs> Who the hell are you guys? The interaction between that starts off the relationship between Rocket and Thor, Thor. which mm-hmm. becomes more poignant in Endgame. Ooh, like you rabbit! <laughs> You're quite a no, and clearly the leader of this expedition. Would you like to join me on this quest? <laughs> but let me just ask the captain. Yeah, yeah. Oh wait, wait that's me. me. Yeah, yeah, I'll go. I'll go. <laughs> um, crew obviously forming forming the handle Storm, for Stormbreaker. Stormbreaker. Yeah. Um, lots yeah. of great moments like their arrival in Wakanda is fabulous Groot. stop playing that game bro. whoa that's uh, some acorns on you kid <laughs> I'm Groot and obviously I brought back in the snap at the end of Endgame, Endgame. after being mm. dusted rockets and Nebula have that nice sort of link and bond which I think was played on really nice in, in this number four, three in yeah. the third one mm. um, because obviously they spent five years together without everyone else so oh. they've obviously naturally became closer Had because bond. Yeah. they were the ones that it knew each have, other they didn't have any choice uh, mm. what else um, yeah because obviously and then the only other thing is the death and the reintroduction of Gamora, like the past Gamora. The 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 scene where Quill gazes eyes on Gamora is quite nice and prominent you until missed, she needs him in the book. Yeah, yeah, you missed missed him the first, first time. time, and then you, you got, got him both, both the, the second. second time. <laughs> this is the guy. Seriously, <laughs> well, your choices were this him or a tree, tree. <laughs> <laughs> which kind of like tree. sets it up that they're gonna then get back together when they like telling them like you know you loved each other and stuff, which is you know not where it goes in number three, and we'll briefly touch on. The holiday um, special and the abduction of Kevin Bacon. Yes, I was going to say firstly <laughs> though, um, where yeah. they end up oh. leaving after you know all saved. After they the live battles. with Thor, and mm. I briefly seen at the beginning of Thor: Love and Thunder. Way too brief. Like we'll go Way over here brief. and answer these distress calls. You go to because <laughs> he's joined them to sort of, like he's like part time member of the Guardians, and then mm. he's like left by him because they find him Korg and the goats very annoying. Oh, so what, what was the narrate? Like the the because I know Tycho narrates most of the film, but where he's like. Um, I can't remember what Thor says, but he's like, um, "I'm sitting on this peak, this cliff, until they, until I'm, until I get asked that they need help." Yeah, yeah. Thor- until they come and tell you, Thor, we need, we your, need help your help to win this battle. Thor, uh, we need your help to win this battle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See you down there. Yeah. <laughs> See you down there. <laughs> here, here it comes. He's going to do the speech, but then in that we don't we do we have any lines from Nebula and Mantis? I don't. No, think I so. don't think so. No, no. Nebula may be so because obviously Karen Gillan is a bigger star. Or she, I think she this. just goes like, Ugh, as yeah. in like, oh here he comes, like, Ugh. yeah. And then they quickly, they are quick to ditch him, which is quite funny in the context of that film. And then the holiday special, which, um, uh, Doctor Kevin Bacon, Christmas, Drax uh, and Mantis is time to shine. I think yes, that's when which they was really, really yeah, good. Like, and mm. in terms of the context, like it is the mini prelude to to no. Guardians 3. It did fit retroactively more than I thought. The only thing like, before 3, I was kind of like, it didn't really set up 3. It's not like Adam Warlock appeared or... Yeah, it's not like it's like here and it ends with and this is what's happening in 3. Yeah, it literally is just a nice diversion almost. It's like, you know, the tutorial levels in games. Yeah, sure. It's like you'd like play it and it's all nice and sweet and then the real stuff happens like once you get into the main campaign. It's like one of them. Once you get past the first cutscene. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was great. That was, you know, it was short, sweet, it was brilliant. It had some great musical stuff, like the fucking Christmas song. The Christmas song. Like, I don't, I don't know, know what Christmas, Christmas is, is, but Christmas is time is here. Yeah. Like, that was fucking fabulous. <laughs> um, like like you say, I like that Drax and Mantis are well, the, the focus. Spotlight. Yeah. Especially Mantis, because she hadn't had a lot of screen time, because we'd seen her briefly join at the end of two. We'd seen her do a bit and actually be quite useful in Infinity War. Infinity War yeah. And then nothing really. Um 
And it's a shame because I think Palm Clemens is a fantastic performer and Mantis is a great character. Absolutely. And hopefully we will see more of these characters again. In the because gun. it's time ding, 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 to ding, ding. talk about for this last half an hour that we have a recording time. That it it went to thirty eight minutes, then it went up to forty. Now it's gone down to twenty. So what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. drum roll, please. So yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Trez. Volume Trez. Trez. Um, two and a bit years later than it was originally meant because it would probably yeah, would have ended up being 2020 all 21 at a push yeah because obviously it was in so guardians of the galaxy 3 was always in production from before infinity war came out i think I f- yeah it was after guardians 2 but before infinity war yeah they're basically like there's like you know it's greenlit it's happening because basically <laughs> when the films do well basically a sequel was getting made like there was always a black panther 2 up for discussion before wakanda forever Rever. was officially on like before they're officially on the slate they yeah. kind of like they talk about it and they plan them and then when they basically ready to go into pre-production then that's like, when... and here's like it officially on the slate kind of thing mm. um but for a long time guardians 3 was like the only post end game movie we knew, we knew about, about. yeah because we were like we knew about that there was talks of a shang chi a black panther 2 was basically all but confirmed as as well with an ant-man 3 and ant-man 3 wasn't definitely confirmed until at least like a year later that it was like it was up for discussion and they were like wanted to obviously close out a trilogy um, a Captain Marvel 2 was a sure thing because the first one made over a billion but for a long time it was just like we've got a we've got a Guardians 3 coming and a at the time Spider-Man 2 was expected to be a Phase 4 but was the last little epilogue to Phase 3 and then in 2018 in Episode 3 of this podcast live which is mm. mad to think Connor's second ever episode ago. yep Who's James Gunn? Because the, because the joke is really now that, you know, you've always done one episode less than me, which is quite oh, funny. Rubbing it in. Um, I'll make it up one day. <laughs> yes, you will. Um, but I need to talk about that, actually, because I forget that I go on holiday soon, so... I mean, I technically do... do I think this Four time... weeks. <laughs> so I, we now kind of need to film one soon. Because <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to Germany the 3rd of June. Ah. Oh. What are you? Is that when you're I going fl- as well? I fly. Sorry, would like I'll probably cut this yeah, off. Yeah. On <clears throat> I'm gone from that Monday. Oh, so you, so, so you that one we're both away. Yeah, we're both away. That because oh, I'm coming back the Saturday. So, so we'll do we'll, we'll do we're just away do two that the week. same week. Wow, that's wow. We are so efficient. A whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, mm. it was announced in this podcast last that James Gunn had been fired from Guardians Ooh. of the Galaxy Volume Three mm. for previously. Um, like the jokes that he made in his tweets from ten years ago, well, that, well, different mindset, different man. Well, now like fifteen years ago, because because well, that's, that's we're getting old. Yeah, um, mm. obviously they were crass. He was sort of like a bit edge lord humory, and um, not, not expected in any capacity. He'd apologised from at the time. He did apologise right from again when they were brought up by people that wanted to just essentially cancel him. Yes. Yeah. And um, you know his whole f- like his films are about growth and change and things like that. So like that's the whole thing. Disney obviously. You know, pulled the trigger early and kind of panicked and went, "Oh no, oh, no, no we can't have this." Us. Kids, not anything, not the kids. Yeah. And then, for a year and a and half? a half, I think something like that, we had who's making Guardians of the Galaxy Volume. No, it was about it was about a year that we was like, "Well, like we're looking for What's a new happening? director." Yeah. Until it was announced that James Gunn would return, but in that, we had had James Gunn hired for the Suicide Squad. Yeah, DC. His film first world. DC jaunt, 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 jaunt. jaunt. Yes, yeah, jaunt. Like, Keep it PG. Yeah, um, jaunt. Yeah. Um, yeah, which was when he was brought back on. Was like, yeah, but he will start pre-production after he's finished everything with um, Suicide Squad because that is now the commitment he's on. Was yeah. making that film committed man, which meant obviously that we had a few years to wait then for Guardians, which um, meant obviously that the next time we saw him was in. Thor, Love and Thunder. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> so this film, like six years between films, I know we had, you know, two Avengers films. The two, in, two of the biggest blockbusters in between. It yes. affected everybody. Which they yeah. were in more of one than the other. Yeah. Um, for a while it looked like this might not have happened for ages. Definitely not. That Taika Definitely Watiti not. maybe would have directed it. Mm. I know there was talk that maybe like get a Taika Watiti to sort of guide a Karen Gillan to direct it because Karen mm. had directed some short stuff some and short directed stuff. Um, Gun some. Powder Milkshake was her most recent one did she direct that, that one oh, I, don't, I know she's in it did she actually, did she actually I, think she directed, it? I think she directed Gun Powder Milkshake oh I'll give it more respect if it's her then because, because I, I she's one of those ones film. that is looking to 
be both in front Act of and behind the camera. Oh, because I don't know. That. She gets to a point where she wants to do less acting. She knows that she no, uh, Navo Papu Shadow. Well, and she um, has directed one, though, hasn't she? She has. Di- I was reading about her earlier. She's directed some like again. 20, I guess twenty thirteen. I'm going to throw the year. I'm going to throw the year. Not tell you the name in a minute. She's done like a 2013, 14 movie. Oh, t- sorry, twenty eighteen. The party's just beginning comedy drama in a feature film directorial debut that's cool and I do not know anything about it but she looks yeah, like she's, she's <laughs> hung over yeah she's going mm. more into like doing all sorts like in front of and behind the camera so that yeah. would have maybe been an option obviously people naturally went for Taika because Thor Ragnarok had a similar sort of tone and cosmic-y like Guardians Guardians yeah definitely um, yep. retroactively thank <laughs> god that didn't happen no 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 um, uh. Uh, not to hate on him it's just like I think you know Bit of an arrogant twat in that fucking GQ video, and also CG and everything. It's just, it's yeah, it's you know, there's ways to conduct there's, yourself. There's too much, yeah, yeah. Um, but Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, we finally got uh, last yeah. week. Yes, because yeah. um, you come back. Um, this was obviously it was always kind of alluded to before he got fired that it would sort of be a final sort of with this lineup. It would be sort of like the final, like with the regular original lineup mm. like because obviously like so, and we suspected for a long time that some would die like some contracts are up some people yeah. would just leave particularly after getting fired and coming back that we thought Dave Batista this is definitely going to be his last thing mm. like, his last um, appearance as Drax yeah so good old Drax <laughs> it was kind of became a bit of sweet because this became like the farewell the, tour the, 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 the Swan song yeah the end of this trilogy but also the end permanently like, yeah, in a way, things. yeah. Because make no mistake about it, this film is definitely the end of this version this, of the Guardians. This storyline across this whole trilogy, where bits and bobs and world saving in between, this definitely is a trilogy, yeah. and this definitely ends. With characters this one. can come back. Mm. Certain characters probably won't. won't. Probably won't. Um, before we get into it, spoiler-free faults. Yeah. I fucking love this. This movie was intense. And this is a comedy about a tree and a raccoon. From the, like, we'll get, obviously, the opening. I won't walk you through the movie. But from the get-go, Rocket's somber song, like, with creep in the background. I just sat there mesmerised because I thought, okay, this is a different kettle of fish. Yes, it felt very different, but still had that. It was nice to go back into this because, obviously, having been so long since a Guardians film, it was nice to be back here. Very much so, Um, yeah. yeah. I will just say, in terms of... My top ten mm. of, of this year, or just of, the, of, the, of this year? Of this year, yes. Good luck across the Spider Verse. I know. Over All to, the luck. Over to you. Ninety-nine thousand Spider Men might not Maybe be able yes, to stop five guardian members. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was. The thing is, in terms of MCU films this year, I was obviously anticipating it because of you know the return and stuff like that but also apprehensive like this is the last time he's obviously wrapping everything up and then we'll he's be selling moved, his soul to then, DC and then, and then yeah. there's moved on to DC because he's yeah. co-CEO directing the Superman Legacy and he's confirmed that you know like he likes to use like a lot of directors <clears throat> like to use a lot of the same people whether it's cameos or main roles or stuff there yeah. will be members of the Guardians cast not just in Superman Legacy but probably in, in some his of the universe. films yeah yeah it's yeah. very much the end of an era film, so for fun wise, we were kind of all like, "Oh, but it's going to be nice to see Jonathan Majors as Kang." Fucking hell, oh, that aged well. Hell. Jesus Ooh. Christ! Ooh. Oh god. Um, but um, yeah, that's not without, even six months. This is without a doubt mm. Mm. my favourite Phase Five film, which I know is not saying much because we only had two. But my, I think the second favourite is going to be the Marvels anyway. So far, mm-hmm. so um, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. my favourite. It's not my... F- okay. It's the best post-Endgame movie of the MCU in terms of quality, story, and we're not just basing it off the nostalgia of No Way Home. I'd say my top three post-Endgame mm. would be this, um, Shang-Chi, Spider-Man, No Way Home. Um, yeah, this, No Way Home... <laughs> See, and then it's between Shang-Chi and Wakanda Forever for me. Despite, oh, despite, for this, a, despite right. the real world sad story behind that film, I did. It's it, such a it, brilliant it story about us. grief. It's it, yeah, like it hit all of us. And I think this goes above it. Like this is if you're oh, so maybe in terms of a quality film, then you're looking at 
this Black Panther. Shang-Chi I really enjoyed because I loved it and didn't expect to. Asia, yeah. Um, Shout and, out to Asian cinema. Mm. Yeah, in terms of representation, just all it did. But this is just... Hits you right in the feels. I cried so much. Um, yeah, I don't blame you. Sad fucking movie. <laughs> sad and happiness as well. But yeah, also, it just like Endgame. It made you feel every emotion. Like which I, is what you want. I'm I'm someone that cries a lot of things anyway because mm. I am. I think it's where like I love films, TV, storytelling. So for me, like to love and be like engrossed in a character. Or characters. Characters in this case, yeah. Like, the journey you go on, and, like, sort of more as I've gone on, like, from when I, like, started doing college and stuff like that, like, looking at a more analytical eye instead of just, like, watch it and, like... switch your brain off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, that stopped happening for me, like, in my, you know, early to mid-teens anyway, just because, like, naturally you're, like, delving more into stuff, like... Doctor Who, for example. Mm. It's an ongoing thing. yeah. Whenever a companion leaves or the doctor leaves, I naturally cry because it's just, it's a thing of, it's the end, but the moment has been prepared for, ironically. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, it is a journey. Yeah. Like, films are a journey such as life. Like, l- films can prepare you for life in a way of loss, saying goodbye, moving on, becoming someone new, um, doing what's best for yourself, realizing that you are who you are. Mm. Kind of like all these kind of things you can experience and not really realize it. Yep. Toy Story is about acceptance. You know, it's about, you know, not judging a book by its cover. cover and, you know, you're accepting and they become best friends. Like even shit like that, like all the way through your childhood, everything has meaning. And and only as we all age like fine wine, can you, do you see it in this yeah. kind of light and context? And I see it more mm. naturally anyway. And obviously, mm. since having a kid, like you just you think of about course, more of that kind of times stuff anyway. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because, like, like you're you're constantly thinking of like, you know, you how you were as a kid, what you're then gonna do, like so that like that's all like at the back passage of my mind. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Kind of, you know, having those same experiences, learning from your mistakes, like not passing mm. on the bad stuff, only passing on the good stuff. There is life that happens in between every glorious moment in your life anyway. And this is becoming a bit like a train spotting <laughs> speech. So I will stop. <laughs> but. You, yeah, sorry, special guest this week, you and McGregor. Yeah. That's mm. fucking Obi-Wan Kenobi. Mm. Um, <laughs> That's fucking Obi-Wan Kenobi. But, like, mm. Mm. films can do that, and they can have a oh, very special place for you, like... A million percent. Like... And I think I always knew, like, deep down, films yeah. would affect me in a way, but, like, going back this to, really to me, reality man. with this, like, this really... The film five years ago, if if the world hadn't happened, if the pandemic hadn't happened, if James Gunn didn't go through what he went through and he isn't with DC, would have this been the film we got five years ago? Or whenever I it was think, ideally going to come out? I think yes, but I think it became more of a thing of, like, you know, it was about saying goodbye. It was about... It was about saying goodbye, yeah. It was about rounding up all the character arcs in a satisfying way I believe like I'm not dissatisfied with definitely any portion of this film yeah definitely satisfying this the is acting mega was stellar satisfying. like the core cast like and the whole marketing was one last time into mm. the into the beautiful forever sky yeah is more poignant yeah, when you watch it yeah, yeah especially from a plot point of view yeah oh, mm. but, um, yeah this film is amazing it's and incredible. There's always, oh, like, you know, the oh. MCU's finally back on track and it's oh, not... No. Oh, so Marvel people have had their little moan listen, now. Though. Listen, Endgame mm. raised all our expectations. We expect that all the time. It's not going to happen. No, but not once every film's in a while, we get back to what we love about the MCU, yeah. which is storytelling, um, heart, soul, family. It's found family tropes, but... You know, we've earned them at this point. Like, this is, mm. a, like, nearly ten years. Ten years worth of storytelling. Yeah. And it was beautiful. And, like, mm. there were some beautiful moments in it that I can't really... But like most into. trilogies, there isn't a bad bit. There's Sure, there's things we nitpick. Yeah. And, like, things we would have tweaked if we were in the writer's chair. But, yeah. like, there's not a bad moment. And this is one of the well, more consistent some trilogies. things where you're just, like, oh, that, like, pacing, like, you take away a bit of that. You'd add yeah, some more I mean. of this in. Yeah. Like, you would just essentially you tweak this person. trim around the edges yeah. and do, like, just the, just the little, yeah. like, finalities. Yeah. But on the whole, this is a fantastic film. This is, for me, like, my favourite James Gunn film. I need to still see a couple of his works, but... I like Sliver. It, this is up like there. I need that's one I do need to um, see. Um He didn't direct Brightburn, did he? Or did he? I know like the five of the James Gunn <sighs> brothers were 
involved. involved in that. Yeah. yeah. But no, the cast are phenomenal. Like the thing is, if we had more time to record, but unfortunately, like we don't, we would go more into spoilers. But <laughs> yeah, um, fabulous. What, 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 was, what was your thing? Like just coming out of the cinema, what was your first thoughts? Marvel's back, but then that's the thing. As much as we all say the MCU, this this is what we love about the MCU. But yeah, the, this is a James Gunn movie, and the and the fact of the, of the reality is, we ain't gonna get this at least not ever again. If James Gunn does dip back into the Marvel toe with some of the Guardians, you know who knows. Um, great, but it won't be the same. It's like Russell coming back to Doctor Who. It won't be what we had with this. Oh, trilogy. It never be back. It will no. never be what we had. Yeah. And while this is while this isn't just a highlight reel, it ultimately is like you say, the story, the characters, the arcs, everything that we've seen in between is satisfying puts it mildly. It was so not what I was expecting. Mm. Maybe that's because of just the recent Marvel trends. But this isn't a Marvel film, this is a James Gunn movie. Yes. And this was just fabulous. Yeah, to say the least, man. It's beauty. Like it looks gorgeous. The soundtrack again is great. Some unexpected choices in there. Definitely unexpected. Um, yeah. The final song was that was mm. good. Like that whole last bit. I think I'm just like I was done. Like I was like because like I've cried at some of the Marvel movies. Mainly mm. like you know when we went and watched Endgame. Of course. Like the yeah. effect, like the the death of Tony Stark, the character that you follow for this whole time. Of course, like that that got me. Um, I, the death of Aunt May, like in mm. No Way Home, like really get <laughs> shook. Yeah, do you, know, do you know what it is for me? Is it shock value. It's it's that whole sequence where Happy is looking uh, on, yeah. then gets arrested, and he's shout like is like he's shouting for Peter to just go, mm. like Pete, you got to run, <laughs> and like they shoot it, like mm. the sh- the police are shooting at a child, at a child. Police brutality is like, real, and he's not even got time to mourn. Like he's just gone. no, he's just got going. Um, yeah. Yeah. Black Panther, um, just because like the real world stuff and that, like really sort of like it was, it was such a shame that we didn't get more of Chadwick Boseman and the whole way they, you know, the film was about grief and saying goodbye and it's beautifully done, mm-hmm. and that whole last bit with, um, with uh, Tucson, yeah. like that really, that really gets me. Yeah. All these moments, man, they're making me cry um, inside. <laughs> I'm crying right now inside. Um, mm. what else? Yeah, that's about. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, um, nothing really in the shows either. But like, no. you know, it's not been like every single thing. But like, there's stuff in it. Like, you look back on it and you get, you can now because of nostalgia and like the whole storytelling device of it, you can get sad on it because it's an arc. Like, it's stuff that's happened. And this is the the biggest, you know, closing of arcs since Endgame. Since like, Endgame, this is, you know, this is an Endgame type of emotional roller coaster. You feel every. Emotion in this, thing. you feel everything. Bradley Cooper is fucking phenomenal. Um, mm. Continues to be one of the best actors and voice actors. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Um, man, voice actor. Uh, he's, uh, he's fantastic. Um, Chris Pratt is great once again. Like you know, controvert real world controversy. We're not gonna, like you know push that to the side because in this it was it was nice to have this Chris Pratt back. Yeah. Instead yeah. of what we've had in Jurassic in between. World, mm. Mario. Um, even Passages. some of the I think some yeah I think magnificent some, seven some of the laziness yeah. in like you know Lego Movie two and things like that you know it's kind mm, of mm, you mm, know mm, that's mm. by the by we can't comment on it we're not him we're not making millions of pounds um, yes. Zoe Saldana was great for what we had I just think we could have left Gamora at the door on this one which is yeah I know everyone safe. kind of wanted the whole thing of he tries to win well, her back Star through Lord, music yeah, and like we get that happy ending in the end but you know it goes a different way a very different way and I really enjoyed that I love that yeah um, I love that Drax MVP underrated oh, across Guardian. the trilogy yeah for me Rocket is the soul of this film like, which was told from the get go but Drax is the one for me across the series yeah, the like, trilogy for me like when we say goodbye to a doctor in Doctor Who yeah like I'm sad for the character and the actor and the actor but I use this example as um, when Peter Capaldi regenerated. Wasn't a big fan of his era, like mm. massively. Mm. But for me, I was more sad of like it was a poignant, like sad moment. But I was also like, I was sad for Peter Capaldi, well, the, the actor, yeah, the actor, the man. In this, yeah, yeah. I was sad to say goodbye to Dave Drax. Bautista more than Drax. Uh, because of, okay, yeah, because, okay. Like Drax mm. is a fantastic character, and you know, thanks to him, 
we know how good Dave Batista is. He's as an actor, as the range, yeah. And this is the mm. thing that started it off. And we know how much he loves this character. And he speaks often, like, without Drax, like, you know, um, we wouldn't have anything. And <laughs> what he's gone through in terms of his sadness with James being fired and coming back and how passionate he was about it. Mm. And for this to definitely sort of look at it and be like, this is the, probably the last time we're going to see him. And yeah. for me, that's sad. Massively. Um, Massively. Rocket, obviously, all of his stuff just makes me fucking well up. Like, Teeth's Floor and Lila, fantastic. fantastic. Amazing. Um, obviously, there's not much we can get to more in spoilers in eight minutes, so it will have to be <laughs> more spoiler stuff next, next week. week. Mm. You'll have all seen it by then, which will be phenomenal. Plenty, plenty enough time. Um, yeah. It's amazing. Like, and I've not... We've all wanted a film to sort of, in the MCU, to feel like this. And for once, it's especially not, for the last couple of years, it's not yeah. overhyped. No, or oh God, no. There's no. not loads of cameos that we got to shove in anywhere. This there is isn't just an a MCU story. movie. It's just a story that naturally concludes, told by the same guy that was at the pen from the start all the way to the finish. Sure, there might have been some changes and might have been some revisions in between, and you know, real life events have happened since. But the movie is still a fucking ten out of ten. Like I, love I, it. I can't wait to own this. That's what I mean. I get that feeling of I want the 4K now. Yeah, I, w- <laughs> like, I, I can't want wait to watch this tri- like it like I say I think it might be the best MCU trilogy. trilogy. Yeah. Yeah. Um uh-huh. You know you on that. Iron Man, mm, Captain America, you can argue it because it has the best film in it. Mm. In the second one. Mm. I think but I think, you know, in terms of the trajectory like it goes like that. Yes. Like, like Civil War is not as good, and it's you know no, it's kind of there. more of an Avengers film. Yeah, um, Thor is sort of like that. That yeah, that. yeah. yeah exactly. And yeah, then with a bit that sort of goes the first like sort of little bit of Love and Thunder, and then yeah. down <laughs> um, cosmic ship crash. Yeah, Avengers is kind of yeah the Just three <laughs> if we're talking true. Ant Man is definitely for me is that that. Sort of it's like a little dip. It's like it's, uh, it could kind of go that way or go down. It's like, yeah, that's you know. what I mean. It, it, um, the trajectory's a bit off. And Spider Man is, I think, just consistent. yeah, consistent. Yeah, I think maybe the smallest of dips to no way up to far from home. Mm, maybe slightly, but not for me. I no, think I no. really enjoy it. No, but when you well, that's the thing when you think about it's a kid with sunglasses that Tony left but didn't give him instructions, and of course didn't have the time to go through it with him because it's a Sony film and they couldn't do that <laughs> and, but like with Do- and then I say the same with Noah Home Doctor Strange going about spells and yet he's telling him oh no you can't undo this spell because I did it. He, he explained logically what would happen he was just like oh for fuck's sake kid you change stop fucking talking and doing the spell oh you little shit I'm going to do it again oh fuck I'm going to do it again Like, but then what happens is brilliant afterwards yeah and I think yeah. this <laughs> I would argue that you could argue that it goes up down up but for mm, me, but I, it's it's, just, it's there, yeah. It's 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 that they are all fabulous. They it's, are brilliant. But the whole story is up there, yeah. It's and just yes, like from where we started off in Guardians One to now, fantastic. There's um, Nebula, obviously one of the best arcs. Yeah. Um, in terms of her complete transformation from the first two to what we get, obviously the events of Avengers play more into that. Mm, um. Mm. But still in this trilogy. Mantis, I think I just my only thing is I wanted more of her. I'm glad. Which is probably the, the best it's probably the best negative you can give someone is that yes. you want more of them. Yeah. Mm. Just wasn't enough. Like yeah. I said, we could have left Gamora out. Um Adam Warlock, I think we'd go into more in spoiler chat, but Next I think yeah. there could have been more done with him. Absolutely. Like I really I love Will Poulter as an actor, like he's fabulous. I think he was good with what he got given. Yeah, this depiction I think, of the character. I think yeah. that might have changed from the first time Draft. he was working on Guardians Three to now. Yeah, like, absolutely, yeah. That yeah, was yeah. less of a thing. Yeah. Um, if you say you said his name, High Evolutionary. Um, uh, Chuck. I'm going to read the name. Um, Chuck, Chuck Woody Iwuji. Something like that. Um, but like one of the best villains in a while because you said like you haven't hated a villain in so long like it yeah was but nice not just in a comic but in gen- in period it like was nice I, to not yeah. have a villain that was total scumbag grey area sort of like you understand them Chuck Wadi Iwuji Chuck Wadi Iwuji who had a brief guest role in Doctor Who Series 6 as one of the um, uh, FBI Carl. guards Carl yeah <laughs> Carl yeah because Karen yeah. didn't realise he was in it in one of the interviews in one of the press junkets. She was like, no way Chuck was in Doctor Who. Like, oh, seriously? Oh, like he's the one that I asked to go to the bathroom. It's like... Oh, oh wow, okay. So they did cross paths. <laughs> no. She's oh. like, wow, that's amazing. And it's like, 
didn't even realise that I'd worked with him. Um, but that's but he is fantastic. And I mean, real life controversy aside, if this whole Kang situation goes towards a bad way, like keep keep him as Kang. Keep it keep it going. Well, Discuss it. He's got the face for, for it. it. <laughs> 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 yeah, you have to find out what that means so next appealing. week. Appealing. You have to find out what that means <laughs> next week. <laughs> but no. Oh, brilliant. He was like, an amazing villain. Boo hiss, not just like grey area. You understand their motives. Oh, kind of thing. It was, he was nice. Just the one that you wanted to die. Like he was a bastard the whole time. The whole time. But you know, the film is carried off of Rocket as it was in the marketing was we expected. Mm. Um, the ending really gets me as well. Just like I know the stuff with like Rocket and stuff gets me, but like the ending of when we l- wrap up this version of the Guardians and where everyone goes, you're kind of like, ev- like everyone's goodbye bit. Yeah. Bar Gamora, I think made me sad. Yeah. Because Gamora is just kind of like, oh, well, she just goes back to what she was doing earlier on in the film. Earlier in the film. Yeah. She says what she is at the beginning of the film, and then she leaves as she does, and not much as she changed. leaves as she does. She leaves um, as she does. Yeah. Five stars. Mm. The first, in my money, f- like, outrageously good film of 2023. This is the first, like, five star for me, yeah. I would say. I, the top, of, I've only, yeah, I've only yeah, seen, yeah. like, 20-odd films, which is no, good for me at this yeah, point. This yeah, year. yeah. Um, I've seen about 31, so I'm not. there's not much different. Uh, for me, if I was to quit my top five, not numbering them, but Guardians and John Wick, I think they're one and two. I still need to... John Wick 4, yeah. Guardians, Mario. I'd give, honestly, Polite Society as a movie, as a well-made movie, mm. was ridiculous and insane and passionate. And then as a, a fifth movie off the top of my head... You've got about a minute left. Uh, let's, let's have a minute worth of suspense. Um, uh, one of the Oscar-nominated ones. No, you know what? No, The Sun. Um, yeah. Uh, Hugh Jackman, Laura Dern, Huge well-acted character. movie. Yeah. That no one would have seen. Yeah, please go and see Guardians. And before Free. we fix this computer, we will see you for next the week. Depthness next week. Um, the time starts now. But literally, mm. um, go um, at Pace Street because Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Um, tell us your favourite Guardians moment so we can go full ham, spoilerific on this, like from the beginning of next week, and then yeah, whatever. Because there's not really anything else out, is there? No. Oh, there well. is. And uh, no bubble contact at gmail.com no, because I don't know when this is going to run out. So, Connor, say something Guardians related. Hard to bury that.